Alright, welcome back to another episode of Coffee for Two. Today we have another monthly coffee from Atlas Coffee Club, so thank you. Today's coffee is going to be, if I had a drum roll, I'd do it. Here we go. Oh, check that out. Look at that. Beautiful. This is how it comes packaged in the box. The first thing you see is the beautiful bag, and they have beautiful decor on every bag. And it is from Ecuador. Ecuador. Ecuador, South America. It's America, but South. Oh, it really came with a really cool postcard of a lake and the, and the mountain. I think that's Quito Mountain. It's beautiful. Oh, that's pretty cool. The tasting notes of this are cocoa powder, red apple, and grape jam. So this is going to be really flavorful for your palate. Brew method is AeroPress, which we do have an AeroPress, and we have a fresh load of filters in there. Roast level, this is a light roasted coffee, so not too dark, not too medium either. It's on the on the lighter side of the spectrum, which that is pretty cool. That is neat. How does it smell? I'm opening it out. The bag is this beautiful navy color with pink and greens and grays and lavenders. It's really pretty. Ooh, I love it. It smells really good. It would be a good candle. It has like sweet notes. Oh, wow, yes. That, you, that really does smell sweet. sweet. I don't really smell the fruity flavors That's of really it, good. like the apple and the grape jam, okay. but it has, it's very aromatic in taste. These beans are also light, a uh, light brown. They're not oily, like some of the ones that we've uh, reviewed so far, how they have an oily sheen on them. Really good looking, and they, they're really light too. They're, they're not heavy like the uh, Zambia blend. They're, the Zambia blend that we reviewed a while back, they were heavy beans. These are really light. They smell really good. They do. They smell really good. And I love, it always impresses me that they really care about the detail of their products. Like just the, the detail of the bags, once again, matches the, postcards and everything that the comes beautiful with it. postcard. And these postcards, this one tells about the coffee and like where it's grown and the mountain and the height, the elevation, what brew method is. And this one they leave blank for you, so if you want to send it somewhere, you can. And it tells about Ecuador and what happens there and a little bit of its history and things to do there. But I think it's really cool. The first postcard says, Welcome to Ecuador, one of the most biologically diverse countries in the world. From the massive tortoises and tropical penguins of the Galapagos Islands to the cloud forests and dense canopies of the Amazon, to the vibrant textiles and dramatic cliff sides of the Andean villages, the small country is a fantastic world in itself. This country, I do believe, is only about the size of the state of Colorado. Not a very big country. They have a cultural heritage that, that dates back so far, more than the United States. I've had family members do mission trips to Ecuador. This coffee was first grown along Ecuador's coast in around 1860 but only became a major commercial focus after cocoa crops were threatened by disease in the 1920s. Mm -hmm. Ecuador was soon well known for low quality beans used in instant coffee, but as the global coffee prices plummeted in the 1980s, so did cult coffee cultivation. Most Ecuadorian coffee is grown on very small farms and small farmers could no longer earn back the money spent to grow and cultivate coffee. In recent years, however, a new found interest in specialty coffee has led to exciting developments in certain pockets of industry. So that, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's impressive to see like somebody go through a hard time yes. where only they can do instant coffee to here they are making high quality beans again. It's always mm -hmm. impressive. So this was this coffee, this Zamora coffee is uh, Ecuadorian and it was grown in Zamora. It is fully washed, uh, the process is fully washed on this. And it has grown again, another coffee that's grown between 1800 to 2000 meters. Uh, for the first time in Atlas history, we're off, we're off to Ecuador. This exclusive coffee brew is a full, almost jam-like body, similar to that of sweet red wine. We have before you the AeroPress. Amanda's gonna demonstrate, again, the usage of the AeroPress with the Ecuadorian coffee. You wanna take it apart? Wanna pull that out? Exits are to the left, <clears throat> to the front, and to the rear. Okay, um, you wanna put 
one of these awesome little doodads of a filter in it. It's just a singular thin piece of paper. Then you place the thin filter into the um, bottom thing that looks like a strainer. That's where your coffee is going to come out of. You want to attach it to the bottom of your air press and click it tight. And then you basically put it over a thing that you're going to pour it in. If you're not, if it's just you, you really only need your little cup. And it, it makes espresso type quality, so a little is all you need. Unless you're a heavy drunk coffee drinker and you can fill the whole thing up in a big cup. You know, no discrimination, just drink it how you like it. What you want to do next is put in your ground. And this is what it ground. It ground really pretty. This is the fine grind on our um, press. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it's really nice and just light. Um, it kicks up a little dust on the fine grind, I've noticed. So we're going to put it in the bottom. I'm just going to use it all. This is also what that's for. I don't really like using this. I don't know. I'm not a fan of that. Anyway, so you want to pour it in, and this is where you have to start working fast. Will you hold that for me so we can shove it in? I don't have enough. This one. I don't have enough pans. <clears throat> so you pour it in, and you can do it kind of quickly. Like fill it up, stir it. You want to stir it for about 10 seconds, 30 at the most. And then kind of just shake it off. You can set your thing to the side. This is where the fun part comes in. So now just push it down. I don't want to make too much since we are brewing a half a pot behind us. I just want to make enough for us to try and get the flavors up. So I'll pour some in Isaiah's little... Um, this is a light coffee. It is really light. I don't know if you can tell. It's really caramel looking. Yes. Really it's light. I a light brown caramel color. You're absolutely right. Almost there, like a real amber color. It almost looks like a, a jam. We have a we have an apple jam, and it almost looks. You can exactly actually like smell the grape jam in there. You can smell it. That is interesting. One of the first coffees we've had where you can actually smell the flavor palette that it said. So that's pretty cool. That the, that came with the car. Ready to taste it? It does. It smells really sweet. Oh, wow. Okay, that is super sweet. I don't think you will need any creamer. No. You don't need any sugar or any sweeteners no, with don't. this coffee. It has a nice, it's very smooth. Oh, that's good. It's very light. It's not heavy. This would be a nice dessert coffee. And mine is gone. That is that is fantastic. There's some more if you'd like some more. Yes, please. This would make an excellent afternoon, late evening coffee. You just want to relax. You got a book out. Just watching the sun go down. This would be an, a perfect coffee for that moment. I think this would be really good with a pie. This would be really good with an apple pie, actually. He don't like pie. I, I don't mind it. It has to be a good homemade pie. His dad makes one of the best apple pies I've had. And I can actually taste a little bit of cinnamon and oats in it. Um, when we talk about flavors like grape jam or the apples, the notes that it says here, like the cocoa powder, ooh, which actually not thinking about it, I think that's what I'm picking up as cinnamon. Can you taste it still on your tongue since that's you finished good. that one? That's good. Like it has, I can taste the cocoa powder type of a taste. That was absolutely fantastic. Um, that one gets a 9 out of 10. Almost a 10. There's, uh, I wouldn't, I haven't rated anything a 10 out of 10 yet. That is probably the best coffee we've had from Atlas Coffee Club in a while. That That's delicious. I Behind us, the coffee's brewed out of the drip. So we're going to pull that out and see if it tastes just as good. Yeah. We have it pulled before us. So I'm going to pour the first cup for Amanda. Thank you. It still comes out light as on this as well. Yes. So the consistency hasn't changed from the AeroPress to the drip. Pour a little bit in there so they can see. I don't know how much you'll be able to see, but there. Just probably a little bit darker in color, but not too much compared to before. So the light roast of the beans, the beans 
are also going to look light and so is the coffee. The light roast doesn't only mean that your coffee is going to be light, it also means that the beans are light. It doesn't mean that you're going to be losing any flavor. Um, a lot of people have the assumption that it means you're getting less caffeine and that's, that's not the truth. Um, all it is is just the color of the beans, whether it's a darker roast or a lighter roast. Right. It doesn't have anything to do with the amount of caffeine that you're getting from the beans. Sometimes I've had a lot more potent light roast than dark roast. I would say that if you're really wanting to get the most out of your coffee far as flavor wise, when, like a second ago when I was talking about how it was mentioning all these notes and we could taste them, mm -hmm. that does not mean that they're roasted with them. It's not, they're not pouring grape jam and apples and cocoa powders. That particular bean has flavors and traces of it. Now there are times where they will put those kind of flavorings with it, but it's not always, I'm not always guaranteed. It's just where they're at, the type of beans, the roast, the wash, all that comes together with what you can taste or what people think they taste. So that's what, when we say we're picking up those notes, that's what it says we're picking up and we're just saying if we agree with it or not. But the dark, when you drip it, you can't taste those like with the AeroPress or the Kimmet. Yes, so I've tasted mine and uh, the taste definitely changes. It's still sweet, just not as sweet. It's Now it tastes more like the cocoa powder, yeah. more than the jam. A bit bitter. Yeah, it's more bitter than it was in, out of the AeroPress, and I would guarantee that if you use a French press or any of the uh, other styles, it would probably come out light and sweet. I feel that when you're superheating the water up out of a drip, it changes the flavor and it doesn't do as good. Yeah, and but the methods too, that's, that's a drip versus um, pressure. So the top three things that we found that you can do in Ecuador, uh, listed on multiple sites, um, it's pretty cool. So the first thing out of most of the sites that I found was visiting the artisanal mercados in uh, Quito. Uh, that's all that heritage that we spoke of before. There's all types of art and, and homemade stuff that is a wonderful, I think it was rated number five total of things to do on your trips to Ecuador. Um, you're gonna find art, you're gonna find homemade things, plus it's in Quito, which is a very popular tourist trap because the very next thing on the list is to visit the city of Quito. The city of Quito sits underneath a mountainside where just outside of Quito you can take a 20 minute gondola ride and view the city at 13,000 feet. And it's super beautiful as you see in these pictures. Um, I would definitely put this on my bucket list as a place to go. The number three thing to do is visit the middle of the world tour which is at the equilateral line. And uh, that's in uh, Medidad del Mundo, and I probably butchered that name pretty hardcore, but it's at this tourist complex because obviously Ecuador is at the equatorial line, uh, which is why it's the middle of the world tour. That's cool. Yes. Another thing to do that was listed is you're just an hour and a half to two hour flight from the Galapagos Islands. That's neat. So you can visit this and the, the flights, you look it up online, are dirt cheap. You can fly and go visit the islands just outside and they also offer boating tours and um, there's parasailing from the thousands of miles of coastline. It's a very beautiful country. There are multiple things to do so if it's on your bucket list go ahead and, and hit yourself some uh, southwest lines outside and go, go visit it. I would do it. I bet they have snorkeling there too. I've heard that the Galapagos Islands have some of the most beautiful reefs still around today and I bet they'd be gorgeous to see. I've heard that it's some of the clearest water Plus just the different array of animals that you would see there versus other countries in the world. Yes. Please click the subscribe button and like this video. Today's verse is James 119. So then my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For Coffee for Two, thank you and have a wonderful day. And this is how... Oops.